Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 10 of Effective Engineer, which is called Invest in Your Team's Growth. The first section is called Make Hiring Everyone's Responsibility. It talks about the importance of the interviewing process in hiring new teammates. Although interviews can be time consuming and feel like hit or miss sessions, they are high leverage activities that can result in significant long-term benefits. Smaller companies benefit more from interviews as each new hire can significantly contribute to the team's output. Dropbox's Albert Nee realized that building a great team is higher leverage than traditional software engineering and shifted his focus to recruiting when the company was struggling to hire engineers. Nee spent time reviewing resumes, screening interview feedback, attending debriefs, scheduling interviews, and talking with candidates to understand their perspectives on the process. Nee's work paid off and Dropbox's engineering team grew from 30 to over 150 members. An effective interview process achieves two goals, screening for the type of people likely to do well on the team and getting candidates excited about the team, mission, and the culture. The interview experience should be both fun and rigorous and questions with high signal to noise ratios should be optimized. Good questions differentiate among candidates of varying abilities, while bad candidates leave you unsure whether to hire the candidate. The types of questions that generate the most signal depend on the qualities most correlated with success on the team. Traditionally, many large technology companies require engineering candidates to answer algorithm and coding questions on a whiteboard. However, many companies have shifted towards interviews that include a hands-on programming component instead. The next section is called design a good onboarding process. Lau believes that a quality onboarding process is a powerful leverage point for increasing team effectiveness. While being onboarded at Uyala and Cora, the author found that the initiation process could be more organized and less stressful. In small teams, there are limited places to seek guidance, and it becomes increasingly challenging to figure out what to learn from as the team grows. Therefore, the author volunteered to lead an effort to build an onboarding program for new engineers when the engineering team was expanding at Cora. The author's research which included Google's EngEDU training program, and Facebook's six-week bootcamp onboarding program, helped define the role of engineering mentorship at Quora and organize a recurring series of onboarding talks. The author also coordinated the creation of training materials, held mentor training workshops, and mentored many new hires. Lau believes that a good initial experience influences an engineer's perception of the engineering culture, shapes their ability to deliver future impact, and directs their learning and activities according to team priorities. Onboarding benefits the team and the company, but the author also explains how it can benefit an individual. Investing in a team success means that individuals are more likely to succeed as well. Effectively ramping up new teammates ultimately gives individuals more flexibility to choose higher leverage activities. A stronger and larger team means easier code reviews, more people available to fix bugs, increased resources for on-call rotations and support, and greater opportunities to tackle more ambitious projects. The author gives an example of Cora's onboarding program, which pairs each new hire with a mentor who assigns small features or bugs from their task lists as starter projects. These projects are great learning opportunities for new hires since mentors have context for each project and can provide guidance and answer questions. On the other hand, a poor onboarding experience reduces a team's effectiveness. Productive output gets lost when a recent hire takes longer to ramp up. Code quality suffers if new team members use abstractions or tools incorrectly, or if they aren't familiar with team conventions or expectations. 
Insufficient training means it's harder to accurately identify low performers. Are they doing poorly because they were bad hires, or do they just need more time to acclimate? Moreover, good engineers undergo unnecessary stress and may even get weeded out because of weak guidance. The impact of low-quality onboarding is far-reaching. Regardless of seniority, everyone can contribute meaningfully to onboarding. New engineers can provide direct feedback on what worked and what didn't during their own onboarding process. If there are wikis or internal documents they used, they can directly update and improve them. Senior engineers can observe what new team members pick up well and what they struggle with, and use that knowledge to improve onboarding for future employees. The author suggests that to create a good onboarding process for a team, it's essential to identify the team's goals and construct a set of mechanisms to accomplish those goals. The author outlines four goals that he believes the onboarding process should achieve to ramp up new engineers as quickly as possible. To impart the team's culture and values, to impose new engineers to the breadth of fundamentals needed to succeed, and lastly, to socially integrate new engineers onto the team. The next section is called Share Ownership of Code. The author recounts a story of being on vacation when a critical software system went down and he was the only one who knew how to fix it. This situation highlights the downsides of being the sole engineer responsible for a project, as it limits flexibility and can disrupt work-life balance. The author argues that sharing code ownership benefits both individuals and teams as it increases flexibility, enables knowledge sharing, and promotes team resilience. The section proposes strategies for increasing shared ownership, such as avoiding one-person teams, reviewing each other's code, rotating tasks, keeping code readable and high quality, documenting workflows and workarounds, presenting tech talks, and investing time in teaching and mentoring others. The author concludes that shared ownership can increase an engineer's opportunities for growth and development while promoting team effectiveness and resilience. The next section is called Build Collective Wisdom Through Postmortems. It delves into the importance of retrospection, debriefing, and sharing lessons learned in the workplace. The author highlights the value of conducting postmortems after incidents and projects, analyzing what happened, why it happened, and what can be done to prevent it from happening in the future. The author also notes that lessons learned from postmortems are often not widely distributed, resulting in missed opportunities to build collective wisdom. The section draws parallels to how NASA collects knowledge by debriefing and with supporting teams after every simulation and mission, and the cumulative lessons from over 200 space flights are captured in NASA's comprehensive tome, which is called Flight Rules. Flight Rules contains detailed, scenario-specific, standard operating procedures, all the lessons ever learned and distilled from past missions, and is consulted every time mission control runs into an unexpected issue. The section suggests that companies can compile step-by-step -step operational guides like flight rules for different procedures and use methodologies like Toyota's quote-unquote five whys to understand the root cause of operational issues. The section concludes that building collective wisdom through retrospection and sharing lessons learned is extremely valuable for our work, even if we aren't launching spacecraft or coordinating moonwalks. The next section is called Build a Great Engineering Culture. Lau talks about his experience in reviewing thousands of resumes and interviewing over 500 candidates, many of whom were engineers from top technology companies. Over time, the author developed a set of questions to ask candidates that allowed him to gauge the engineering culture of the candidate's current company. By tallying the responses, the author was able to identify toxic and great engineering cultures. Engineering culture refers to the values and habits shared by people on the team, and a great culture provides many benefits. 
Engineers feel empowered to get things done, which makes them happier and more productive, leading to higher employee retention. A strong engineering culture provides a shared context and framework for decision making, which helps teams and organizations adapt quickly to problems they encounter. Furthermore, a great engineering culture serves as a useful tool for recruiting talent, creating a positive feedback loop that strengthens the culture. Based on the author's interviews and conversations with hundreds of engineers, the best engineering cultures optimize for iteration speed, push relentlessly towards automation, build the right software abstractions, focus on high code quality by using code reviews, maintain a respectful work environment, build shared ownership of code, invest in automated testing, allot experimentation time, foster a culture of learning and continuous improvement, and hire the best. The author notes that most of these topics have already been covered in this book and for a good reason. The best engineers enjoy getting things done, and the high leverage investments covered in the book empower them to get things done faster. The best engineers want to build on top of high quality and well-tested code bases, have short iteration and validation cycles to learn quickly, and believe in relentlessly automating processes to relieve their operational burden so that they can keep learning and building new things. With all that being said, the key takeaways are to make hiring a priority, to help the people around you be successful, and to create a great culture through documenting collective wisdom and fostering a sense of shared ownership of the product and code. So that's all for this chapter. My name is Daniel and I make programming related videos, sometimes coding tutorials, and others more abstract like book chapter summaries. I do it not only because I love teaching you, but I also love learning for myself as well. So if you found this video and this series helpful or thought provoking, I'd appreciate a like, subscribe and comment. I love hearing from you and we'll see you all in the next one.